Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, today we will talk about very interesting um, experiments uh, which basically resulted in um, research and study of the something which is called photoelectricity. Well, the word photoelectricity means that it's related to light, photo, something related to light, and, uh, well, electricity, electrons, etc. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. Um, the website contains prerequisite course, Mass for Teens, and this one, Physics for Teens, and some other things. Um, the website is absolutely free, there are no advertisements, no strings attached, you don't even have to sign in, I mean, unless you wanted to. Um, it has, uh, for every lecture, it has textual documentation, basically like a textbook, which explains exactly the same thing in a textual format. Um, there are problems, there are exams, which you can take any number of times to check yourself. Um, and obviously, th this and the math for teens are courses, which means there is a menu, there is a hierarchical menu, which basically put the whole material into logical sequence. So every lecture depends on something which was done before, and I do recommend you to take the whole course, even if you just accidentally found this lecture on Unizor, on uh, YouTube, for instance, uh, go to unizor.com and uh, go with the whole course. Photoelectricity. Okay. Uh, by the end of 19th century, physics was pretty much in a very self-satisfactory kind of condition. Um, the Newtonian uh, corpuscular model uh, of the light was, well, practically defeated because all these um, interference, diffraction, dispersion, etc. of the light, they um, explained everything from the wave um, standpoint. So the light is the waves and uh, based on um, research of uh, James Maxwell, who basically put everything into mathematical, uh, onto mathematical background with um, uh, four Maxwell equations, which basically describe the electromagnetic field and uh, light as oscillations of magnetic field. So that was done and everybody was pretty much satisfied. Well, and as usually happens, every model has its limits. And uh, certain experiments showed these limits. So the experiments are very simple. Um, if you have something like a metal plate, let's say, whatever the material is, metal is usually they put something like silver so it doesn't oxidize. And you put a beam of light onto this surface under certain circumstances uh, people detected electrons flying off the surface. <coughs> well, by itself it was not surprising at all, because obviously the light carries energy, and the previous lecture was actually dedicated to calculating what is the energy density of the beam of light. Um, with formulas, it's all based on um, again, this wave approach to uh, light as electromagnetic constellations based on Maxwell's equations. We uh, derived the formula for amount of energy per unit of volume, per unit of time, or amount of energy in one particular wave of a single ray of light um, uh, based on wavelengths, uh, uh, frequency, etc. Okay. Considering light carries energy, obviously when light, uh, the beam of light, um, hits the surface of, uh, of the metal, uh, there are some electrons um, in, in this metal, and uh, the energy which uh, is carried by the light, um, well, whatever is not reflected, is absorbed. And what does it mean absorbed? it's transferred to kinetic energy of electrons. They start 
moving faster and maybe atoms uh, the whole atoms may be uh, move faster they're um, oscillating around some maybe neutral place the, ho uh, the whole piece of metal is supposed to be heated and that's fine that's absolutely um, um, goes within the framework of uh, electromagnetic waves as the theory of light what was strange and that was discovered experimentally and that's what actually signified something which cannot be explained in a plain electromagnetic uh, oscillation kind of theory that you need for every kind of uh, type of metal there is a special frequency let's call it F0 of the light unless light has this or greater frequency of oscillations there is, there is no electrons so for every metal there is something like a threshold if the light has this or greater frequency of oscillations effect is observed observed and if the light is uh, if the light has uh, less frequency or uh, longer wavelengths um, effect is not observed at all that cannot be explained in terms of classical electromagnetic um, field as presented by Maxwell on, on the top of this theory when electromagnetic field is basically continuous because there are differential equations. What does it mean, differential equations? It means we are getting smaller and smaller piece of volume, and we are calculating the density of light, which is a, basically a derivative. OK. The problem um, basically needs to be explained. Well, the first was Max Planck, German physicist at the end of the 19th century, who was researching something not related to this particular um, uh, uh, experiments. He was talking about what kind of electromagnetic fields uh, are emitted by a heated um, piece of matter. Um, because heat, again, that's oscillations, and the heat, when heat is radiating, that's electromagnetic oscillations. Um, maybe we don't see it unless we heat it really um, to a higher temperature when let's say the piece of metal becomes red because it was so hot then we see it but if you don't if we don't see it it doesn't mean that there are no um, emitted electromagnetic uh, oscillations there are they are just an infrared uh, um, uh, spectrum and we just don't see it with our eyes but we can see it with some kind of gadgets and he came up with some theory um, which was um, at least partially related to something which later on was, uh, was called quantizing. So the energy emitted might not actually be a continuous energy. It might be in pulses. And the, um, the real results, theoretical results, um, towards that particular direction, changing of the model, was done by Einstein in 1905. Um, and uh, he basically published something which was initially met by uh, physicists with uh, a lot of skepticism, because what Einstein um, suggested was something closer to um, Newton's corpuscular mo model of, of light. So he was suggesting that the light transfers energy in not in a continuous flow when it's basically can be accumulated, etc., etc., and later on this would kick the electrons out. This does not observe to this lower frequencies. And um, uh, the classical electromagnetic theory doesn't depend on frequency, you just you know, make it longer and even with a lower frequency it should su supply enough energy to, for electrons to fly out. Did not observe. This is not, uh, people did not observe it. So, 
the theory which was offered by Einstein was completely different and again closer to corpuscular model goes to the times of Newton. So he suggested that the energy is carried by light not as a continuous flow which can be uh, infinitely divided into smaller and smaller pieces. No, there are some smaller pieces, like matter has molecules, which is the smaller piece which basically carries the properties of the mo molecule, right? Let's say a molecule of salt, uh, r regular salt, it's, uh, uh, I think molecule is something like natrium chlorus two different atoms together, they make a mo molecule. If you break it, it's not a salt anymore, right? So there is a molecule as a minimum of matter which carries the properties of the matter. Same thing with light. He suggested that for every um, uh, frequency of light, the energy which is carried by light is not a continuous, but in pulses or pieces, whatever you can call it, each one carried amount of energy equals to um, it proportional to frequency of the light. This F is a frequency, number of oscillations per second. So it does not really negate the, the wave theory because we are still talking about oscillations per second. We are talking only about how energy is carried by light. And a H is just a constant uh, it's, it's called Planck constants. Planck. That's the name of the physicist I mentioned before, who basically researched um, the uh, emitting of electromagnetic waves by heated uh, objects. So, he actually put the whole theory, it's a very big article, um, uh, of Einstein, and um, he was awarded Nobel Prize, but not immediately. Again, as I was saying, physicists were very skeptical about this in the beginning, and only additional theoretical research, etc., only in 1920, like 1, 22, I don't remember, um, at like 16, whatever, 17 years later, he was awarded Nobel Prize for his work which basically was in the beginning of a revolution in physics of the 20th century called quantum physics. Because Einstein suggested that this is basically something which can be called a quantum of light, quantum of energy of light. So for every frequency there is this amount of um, energy which is carried by um, pulses and there is no smaller piece of energy. It's not a continuous flow of energy. It's a, it's a, um, like pulsing. So you have one piece of energy, then another piece of energy, etc. That's how it's carried. It was an unusual theory, to tell you the truth, because on one hand he retained the wave properties of light because there is a frequency. It means it's oscillations. But on the other hand, he has suggested that there are some corpuscular properties, properties of the particles, like particles. Every particle carries a certain amount of energy. You cannot divide it, basically. Now, this amount of energy is called photon. So that's how this particular term was invented. Uh, so the photon is a minimum amount of energy um, which light carries as a portion. Okay, now let's go back to our photoelectricity or photoelectric effect or photoemission sometimes it's called. Emission because electrons are emitted from the surface. So how can this be explained in this particular from this particular viewpoint. Okay, here is how. Electron consumes energy by carried by a photon completely or not at all. So 
the energy gets consumed or rejected again based on these portions so if this portion of energy is sufficient to um, basically um, give the electron enough kinetic energy to um, tear off the attraction of the uh, nucleus of the atom, then it goes away, it flies away. If it's not, then it's not basically consumed, or maybe it's maybe it actually does have certain amount of energy consumed this photon but it's not enough for tearing off the um, attraction of, of, of the of the nucleus and it might actually shake a little bit and heat maybe the whole thing is always heated but not sufficiently to produce electrons flying away from the surface so that's basically how the existence of this particular threshold for the frequency can be explained. So again, if this frequency which is carried by a photon, if the frequency is high enough to give this portion of energy to an electron, and electron would have enough energy to um, fly away from the nucleus, then we observe the effect, this photoelectricity effect. If this frequency is not sufficient, if the uh, uh, nucleus holds quite uh, strongly the electron, and it obviously depends on what kind of a metal we are talking about, or whatever, it can be glass as well, it just holds it probably uh, stronger. Uh, so if it's insufficient, then we don't observe this particular effect. By the way, effect can be very uh, useful in practical purposes, because if this particular flow of electrons depends on the light, we can construct, let's say, a, um, a, a counter of, of parts which are, are going on the conveyor. Um, if you have a beam of light and the part as it goes along the conveyor can interrupt this beam of light, then while the beam of light is reaching the recep re reception and reception can be something like this and there are electrons flying and there is some kind of a circuit which you can you can have plus here minus here and electrons will go to this uh, making a circuit right um, so that's how you can count so it will be either there is a electricity in this uh, circuit or there is no electricity if it's interrupted and that's how you can count just a simple example or count passenger which are going along some road whatever so existing existence of the protons was the most important um, uh, achievement if you wish and the result of this is that the whole approach to physics of 20th century um, was changed towards quantum theory. I mean, after these ideas were um, supplemented by uh, many, many experiments and uh, uh, skeptic physics, uh, physicists uh, were convinced that, that Einstein was right, um, they started basically developing the whole quantum physics theory uh, in, in this particular direction, and it resulted in numerous successes. Okay, now, um, I wanted to present you some kind of a um, common sense model, which should give, well, it gave me some comfort accepting that only a proper frequency is needed, or greater, is needed to kick the electrons out of the surface of the of this plate. And uh, I have come up with some, as I was saying, common sense explanations for myself, and I think I would like to share it with you, and hopefully I will convince you that this is really not something which, you know, came out from, from the thin air. It has some common sense explanation. And here is my explanation.
consider you are in a car and you are going along the road and uh, it's not smooth it's bumpy so you have some big bump big in in terms of not in terms of height but in terms of length so there is some kind of a height and there is some kind of a length okay now if this length is long enough and you are moving in your car with certain speed you might feel that you're going a little bit up and a little bit down but it's no big deal because the steepness of this is really minimal let's consider you have exactly the same height but the road is contains bumps of much shorter wavelengths or larger frequency right because as the car goes with certain speed the frequency of these bumps the long bumps would be significantly less than the frequency of this bump now what happens in this case where would you feel much uh, more bumpy in this case or in this case well obviously in this case why because this is steeper and whenever the car moves it should go up steeper which means during the same amount of time the car goes with certain speed right so the time is the time needed to cover this distance the car goes up in this case during the same time car goes up only much less so the acceleration upwards acceleration and downwards acceleration is significantly greater in this case and what if acceleration is greater well it will just basically kick you upwards right so you might even um, uh, uh, be in the in the, in in the air above the above the seat of the car if the bump is really kind of steep, right? So it needs a specific frequency of these oscillations to um, provide you enough acceleration so you basically are jumping uh, in, in the air and you, um, you go above the seat in this particular case you will not be in the, in the air you will be on the seat maybe with a little less or a little more pressure but you will not uh, be in the air uh, you will not hit your head uh, on the car's roof right but in this case you might so that's exactly my kind of common sense explanation that with a higher frequency even of the same amplitude but with a higher frequency you have uh, like more chances for electrons to be kicked out from the surface of the um, the electrons are like you in the car and the surface of the metal was basically the level of the seat of the car in this case you might be up in the air in this case but you will not another common sense example consider you just wash your hands and you would like to shake off the excess of water what do you do if you do very slow movement the water will not come out from from your hands right but if you shake it if you jerk it basically then the water will come out so this acceleration is very important so it looks like in the in, in our world not in the world of electrons and uh, in the electromagnetic waves in our world this frequency is also very very important um, it basically gives you the same kind of effect which you observe when the frequency of light is um, e even from the standpoint of pure wave theory all right now it's a different question that Einstein formulated this thing using basically the concept of quantum of light uh, the photons um, this is I would say a, a theoretical physics which I, I, I right now I don't want to go into but the common sense 
explanation that you need certain minimum frequency of oscillation to kick electrons out from their orbits around the nucleus, it's kind of making sense with this type of explanation or with the shaking of hands uh, to, 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 to shake off excess of water. So that was kind of my, again, common sense uh, attempt to uh, explain that there is nothing very strange about uh, existence of uh, minimum frequency the electromagnetic waves should have to start kicking off the electrons. Now, what did I not cover yet? Yes, one more thing, yes. Um, so, energy of the photon depends on um, frequency and the Planck constant. It's a constant, basically. It has certain value and mm, uh, textual uh, notes for this particular lecture uh, contain the value. I don't remember it, obviously. So, what if the frequency is significantly greater than the frequency needed to kick off electrons with that particular um, material the plate is made of? So, every material has certain minimum frequency needed to start um, uh, photoelectricity, photoelectric effect. So what if F is greater? So if H is, uh, if H times F is um, more than sufficient to, uh, to kick off an electron, and again one electron consumes one um, photon, so, where is the energy, excess of energy going? So, if you have certain uh, energy, I call it energy free, which is needed for electron to free from the orbit around which it's circulating. So, what if my energy of the photon, which is this, is greater? Well, <coughs> Since the whole energy is consumed by electrons, part of this energy, meaning this part, is consumed to basically tear off the, uh, the, of the orbit, and the rest of it goes to kinetic energy of this, en of this electron as it comes out from the surface. So, this is a kinetic energy of electron after it spent this amount of energy to basically tear off the uh, nucleus and whatever the excess goes into kinetic energy of the electron with m is mass and v is speed of electron as it comes out from the surface. Now, what if I will increase the intensity of the light of the same frequency, which means I will increase the number of photons per second, so to speak, emitted by the source of light? What happens in this particular case? Well, more electrons, well, if the frequency is sufficient to kick off electrons from its orbit, then if number of photons per second is increased, then the number of electrons picked out will increase. So this number of photons per second is basically an intensity of the light. And that in, in increasing intensity with the same frequency sufficient to kick off one particular electron, so increasing intensity will increase the number of electrons. So intensity of the light if the light is sufficiently strong, if F is sufficiently great, then it will increase the number of electrons. Increasing the frequency will increase kinetic energy of every electron kicked out from its orbit. So these are two very interrelated things. Intensity of the light and frequency of the light. Frequency goes into kinetic energy of the electrons kicked off the orbit 
and intensity goes into the number of these electrons. So number, so all electrons will have exactly the same kinetic energy, but their number will increase. So kinetic energy of the electron depends only on the frequency of the light and uh, properties of the uh, material, how much energy electron needs to basically rip itself off the orbit. So these are two very important things. Frequency increases kinetic energy of kicked electrons. Intensity increase, increasing, increases the number of these electrons per unit of time. Okay, that's it. I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. It's maybe a little bit more concise which, um, uh, than, than whatever I was talking about. But anyway, it's very um, good to have it in writing as well as uh, um, this lecture type of things. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>